Hello, it's Rob Hutz here from My Climber to Me. I'm walking up the steps of the Manchester Town Hall and we're just about to head into the British Energy Challenge. We're here today to talk to some of the exhibitors at the event and also to take some of your questions on climate change. Let's go and check it out. Hi, my name's uh, Richard Lees. I'm the leader of Manchester City Council. I'm also the chair of the Greater Manchester Low Carbon Hub. What I'd like to know is uh, what real evidence is there uh, that we are having more extreme weather events around the globe? Hi, my name's Chris and I'm at the British Energy Challenge. And my question for my climate and me is what are we doing in schools to get the message of climate change embedded in these young people's heads? one of the directors of the Carbon Literacy Project. Everyone needs to have that baseline knowledge, just like other forms of literacy. If you can read and write, or you can do health and safety at work, you should also be carbon literate. We're sort of here today to sort of introduce nuclear energy and its importance to the wider public, because there's a lot of uh, hearsay about it. People just need to be educated on it. There's a lot of energy wastage just generally in people's homes. People just unaware of uh, certain things they can do. There's plenty of uh, good examples of that around us in this event. I'm director of Dwell. Uh, we build small eco micro buildings. Now using the building is for carbon literacy workshops. So it's, uh, we've, it's become an education resource. We're doing workshops, half day workshops during the week, helping people to understand more about uh, greenhouse gases, carbon, climate change. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm here with the British Energy Challenge. And my question to the scientists is, how on earth can you explain the fact that the, the, oh, the world started off as a ball of magma, hot molten lava, and has been changing energy, has been changing temperature, has been changing its ecosystem for millions of years, and you think that it's going to stop because some little humans are burning a few little bits of fossil fuel. How can you explain that? I'm from uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. We've set up an initiative called the Greater Manchester Hydrogen Partnership, which is about bringing the regions, universities together, um, a lot of private sector together, all with a common goal of um, promoting hydrogen technology across Greater Manchester. I'm Mike at the British Energy Challenge, and I work as the outreach worker for Planet Hydrogen, a little NGO here in Manchester. It seems to me as if the RMECS is not looking seriously enough at reducing this actual load. What is the answer to this question? How do we actually bring down the load of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so that it approximates to what it should be and was until 1750, 280 parts per million? Thank you. We're both from Greater Manchester Tree Station and we put wood to work. In other words, we take um, trunks and branches of trees that otherwise might have gone to landfill and we turn them into wood chip fuel, firewood, sawn timber products and the like. So all the wood is put to good use and we're creating therefore some jobs in one of the most deprived wards of Greater Manchester um, and we're reducing carbon emissions. This is a chopping board made from um, tree station timber by a local social enterprise called um, Start Creative. Now Start Creative are based in Salford um, and they um, employ volunteers who have had um, drug, alcohol and um, um, social deprivation um, issues in their lives to make these chopping boards and now they're being sold in John Lewis across the country. We're here at uh, the Manchester Town Hall and the en British Energy Challenge really to publicise uh, what's going on in the industry and just to make people aware that uh, the opportunities within the industry, be it for apprentices, graduates, finance and commercial guys, uh, uh, interns and, and really to, to make people aware that the, the market is here, it's changing uh, and, and to answer some of society's needs. My question for my climate and me is with all the individual electronics like iPads, iPhones, uh, mobile phones, m many people having more than one device, how is the energy used to charge them up and also build their stuff? affecting the climate, how's, how's the world dealing with that? Wow, well what a fantastic day we've had here at the British Energy Challenge. We've met some really interesting people and seen some fantastic projects. But what happens now? Well you need to go to myclimateandme.com to vote for your favourite question. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, vote, ask and explore.